Good morning, everyone. This is Jerry from Enhanced Vision, and we thank you all for joining us. Um, today, I would like to present our um, optometrist from Viewfinder Low Vision Resource Center in Arizona, and that is Dr. Corona Wong. And we are going to be discussing enhancing daily living for patients with low vision. So I'd like to turn the uh, webinar over to Dr. Wong. Doctor, please take over. Good morning. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And I'd also like to thank Jerry and Enhanced Vision for giving me the opportunity to share the information I'm going to discuss with everyone. Um, let's start off by discussing what a visual impairment is. According to the American Optometric Association, anyone with non-correctable reduced vision is visually impaired, and they can have a wide range of problems. Few people are totally without sight. Uh, most individuals today classified as blind actually have some remaining sight. And thanks to the development in the field of low vision rehabilitation, they can be helped to make good use of it and improve their quality of life. There are different levels of visual impairment. The World Health Organization has a classification system. And it is when the vision in the better eye with the best possible glass description um, is considered mild when the vision is 20-30 to 20-60, uh, moderate if it's 20-70 to 20-60, severe visual impairment when it is 20-200 to 20-400. Um, in addition, anyone with severe visual impairment or worse is considered legally blind in the U.S. Um, furthermore, severe, I'm sorry, I already went over the severe, and a profound visual impairment is 2,500 to 21,000. And 21,000 or less is considered near total visual impairment or near total blindness. And individuals without any light perception is considered total blindness or total impairment. There are also levels of visual impairment based on visual field loss or uh, side vision or peripheral vision loss. It's important to understand that visual acuity alone is not a good predictor of uh, visual impairment or function. Uh, some individuals with relatively good visual acuity, such as 2040, can have difficulty functioning, while someone with worse visual acuity, 2200, somebody who is considered legally blind, might not have any real problem. And here is an example of how visual acuity alone is not a good predictor of visual impairment. To the left is an individual who has 20-40 uh, vision, good, decent central vision. However, they have uh, visual field loss, leaving with them with about 20 degrees uh, central vision. To the right is an individual who has 2200 out of the better eye. However, they have no visual field loss, so they can decipher um, images of the scenery, whereas somebody to the left who has good central vision but poor side vision may not be able to see the whole entire scene or, for example, walk through a crowded area as well. A more specific definition by Korn and Koning of visual impairment is a person with a a visual impairment may have difficulty accomplishing visual tasks, even with prescribed corrective lenses, but who can enhance his or her ability to accomplish these tasks with the use of compensatory visual strategies, low vision, and other devices, as well as environmental modification. There are many different causes of visual impairment or low vision, so I'm going to discuss the most common. Um, Age-related macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, and cataracts are the four most common. Um, the primary causes of low vision are eye diseases, but there may be inherited eye diseases or as well as injury or brain injury, eye injury or brain injury that can cause a visual impairment. Age-related macular degeneration is the most common cause of low vision in patients over the age of 60. 
age-related macular degeneration is a progressive eye disease that affects the macula. The macula is the part of the retina or the back of the eye that is responsible for central vision. There are two forms of macular degeneration, wet and dry. Wet age-related macular degeneration is less common, however, it ha can have a greater effect on decreasing central vision. Dry age-related macular degeneration is more common. Approximately 85 to 90 percent of patients have a dry form, and it has less of an effect on vision loss compared to the wet. So how does age-related macular degeneration cause low vision? What happens is there is a gradual breakdown of the light-sensitive cells that conveys information to the brain and the underlying uh, supporting tissue. This will cause central vision loss. To the left is a retinal photo of an individual with age-related macular degeneration. Their yellow to whitish spots are called drusen, and this is the breakdown of the light-sensitive cells and that would cause the central vision loss. This is an image of what a patient may see due to age-related macular degeneration. To the left is a normal, um, an image of somebody with normal vision, and to the right is an individual who may have macular degeneration. It can cause blur, distortion, or dot spots in the central vision. Glaucoma is the second leading cause of blindness in the U.S. It is a group of eye diseases that affects the optic nerve. The optic nerve sends information from the eye to the brain to form an image. There are different types of glaucoma, and the most common is open angle glaucoma, which accounts for 95% of patients with glaucoma. Open angle glaucoma is a slow, painless, progressive eye disease that can affect the peripheral vision or side vision if it's left untreated. To the left is a retinal photo focused on the optic nerve. The optic nerve connects to the brain and sends information. When glaucoma is left untreated, it will cause thinning of the nerve or atrophy. And this is caused by elevated pressures in the eye. Without treatment, there's a gradual loss of side vision, causing tunnel vision. And patients will miss objects to the side or the corners of their eyes if they have untreated glaucoma. Here is what an individual with glaucoma may see. To the left is normal, and to the right is an individual with a visual impairment caused by glaucoma. The Central vision is intact, however, the peripheral vision is lost. Cataracts is the leading cause of visual impairment, impairment for those over the age of 55. What happens is, as we age, the protein which is inside of the lens may start to call up, up causing a cataract. Um, cataract is the clouding of the lens inside of the eye and it affects the vision. The most common cause of cataracts is age-related. However, it can be caused by diabetes, eye injury, or medication. So how does cataracts cause low vision? Uh, the image to the left, the left side has a normal eye. You can see the pupil is just a black part of the center of the eye. And to the right is an individual with a cataract and you'll see an opacity. Um, and this occurs when protein clumps up in the lens and it reduces the amount of light reaching the retina causing blurred vision. Some symptoms may include double vision, difficulty with colors or sensitivity to light or glare, as well as poor night vision. And an individual with cataract may um, have a cloudy appearance. To the right is a patient with cataracts. The left is normal. They may have difficulty um, seeing colors, as I mentioned. In addition, a lot of patients will complain that 
it appears as if they are looking through a dirty windshield with or without glasses on. Diabetic retinopathy is also a common cause of visual impairment. It is one of the four leading causes of severe visual impairment in the U.S. And generally, it affects more of the younger patients, 40 and older. It's a result of diabetes, and it affects the retina, which is the back of the eye. In some patients with diabetic retinopathy, blood vessels may swell and leak fluid. Others may have abnormal new blood vessel growth on the surface of the retina. To the left is a patient with a diabetic retinopathy, and the red spot is bleeding or leakage in the back of the eye. Um, this may be treated with laser or injection. However, with the special laser treatment, um, they're left with blind spots in the back of the eye. And so with diabetic retinopathy, as I mentioned, there's blood leakage, and this can occur at the macula, which is the sweet spot of the eye causing blurry vision. In addition, fragile new blood vessels may grow into the eye and leak and block vision. Patients may also complain about floaters, uh, difficulty at night with driving, and hemorrhaging, which, is, which can be uncontrolled, can cause a retinal detachment. Here is an image to the left with normal vision and to the right. Patients with diabetic retinopathy may have blind spots or even restricted uh, peripheral vision due to a retinal detachment. So I just discussed the most common causes of visual impairment. Now I'm going to discuss how it affects daily living. Uh, quality of life is definitely affected with patients who have a visual impairment. It can also cause emotional distress. Uh, individuals with an, an impairment may complain about difficulty reading small print, such as labels on a medicine bottle, telephone book, or food labels, uh, difficulty reading a newspaper or book, being able to recognize people even when they are close may be challenging. And traveling may be difficult with patients who have a visual impairment. Being set stairs or curbs may be challenging, reading traffic street signs or store signs. In addition, hobbies can be affected, such as sewing, knitting, crocheting, or carpentry. Um, patients may have difficulty paying bills or writing out checks, filling forms. Other hobbies that may be affected include bingo, dominoes, or card games. In addition, sports may be affected as far as bowling, handball, tennis, or golf. Um, daily living, uh, including cooking, watching TV, uh, daytime driving, and nighttime driving may also be affected. There are options uh, for individuals who have a visual impairment. Low vision rehabilitation for the treatment of visual impairment. An optometrist or an ophthalmologist who practice focuses on low vision is skilled in the examination, treatment, and management of patients with visual impairment. Each type of low vision problem requires a different therapeutic approach. Treatment plan may include prescription glasses, specialized optical systems, therapeutic filters, non-optical options and or magnifiers, and the prescription of rehabilitation therapy to effectively maximize visual function for activities of daily living. There are many different low vision aids or devices to enhance vision. Patients with a visual impairment can maximize their remaining vision through the use of low vision aids and devices. The main principles behind low vision is to enhance contrast, control glare, and increase magnification. Most people use multiple low vision aids because each is designed to serve a very specific purpose. It's not unusual for someone to have five or more vision aids. There are different ways to improve contrast and glare. Um, 
many of the options are filters that can improve your vision both distance and near as well as decrease eye fatigue while protecting the eyes from UV rays. Uh, different colored filters work with different patients. Yellow is probably the most common uh, filter that I've used with patients, especially with macular degeneration. Magnification um, is essential for low vision devices to enhance daily living. It helps, magnifying things has helped objects appear easier to see or text or images better. Uh, there are many different types of devices and options that are specific for TAP. I'm going to go over different tasks and options as far as devices that can be used. For short-term near tasks such as reading price tags, menus, medicine bottles, or telephone books and food labels, a hand magnifier or a stand magnifier work well. Um, some of these devices have lights on them, which are important because lighting makes a huge difference on how well a patient may see. Long-term near tasks may include sewing, crocheting, reading books, or newspapers. Um, higher magnified lenses, uh, as well as max details, is an option. Um, it's important for patients to understand that when we use glasses to magnify things, they have to be held much closer than normal. Intermediate tasks include playing cards and bingo. Sometimes telescopes may be used to magnify things while still having a good or longer working distance. Other tasks may include thing signs uh, that can be um, helped with monocular or binocular telescopes. There are monocular telescopes that can be clamped onto a pair of glasses for uh, quick viewing of distant objects. Individuals who are looking for distant viewing for long term, such as watching TV, driving, or sports events, uh, would benefit from telescopes. There are biopic telescopes that are available. We use these for some patients who are not able to drive due to MVD limits, but with the uh, biopic telescopes that enables them to be legal to drive, uh, here in Arizona at least. Um, other options include the Max TV as well as um, the uh, Keplerian telescope. There are also non-optical uh, devices, such as talking watches, large print books, large font phones, or computer programs that can be used to help enhance daily living. As I mentioned previously, many patients will have multiple devices depending on the task. Um, there are some different advantages of devices. As I mentioned previously, reading glasses may require an extremely close working distance. Some of the stand magnifiers, the larger or higher the magnification, the smaller the field of view. And so you're limited as far as how many letters or words you're able to see when looking through the hand magnifiers. In addition, uh, lighting is important and not all of the devices have good lighting. Um, if a patient has a restricted field of view due to a stoma or blind spot, either due to macular degeneration or uh, glaucoma, it may inhibit the use of a device. In addition, some devices only allow for single magnification or power. There are video magnifiers that are available, and they limit some of the disadvantages of other devices. Um, the video magnifiers are capable of magnifying while still maintaining a good working distance, as well as providing a larger field of view. Video magnifiers can enhance both the distance and close-up viewing objects. Uh, they are electronic devices, and typically they consist of a camera and a viewing screen to aid people in tasks, which include reading, 
writing, grooming, or even cooking. Material is placed underneath the camera and it is magnified and then displayed on a monitor. And video magnifiers can uh, be available in a desktop unit such as a closed circuit television or CCTV, as well as portable or handheld video magnifiers which can be used on the go or for uh, short term tasks. I'm going to go over some video magnifiers that are available through Enhanced Vision. The DaVinci CCTV uh, provides a clear image using a Sony HD camera. It has the ability to text to speech. Um, in addition, the camera is uh, mounted and it can be moved to view both distance, intermediate, and near objects. It has different modes that allow for customization and the camera is able to um, slide back and forth making it easier to view objects. The Merlin HD um, is nice for patients who may be wheelchair bound because the screen can pivot horizontally or vertically. It also has a clear Sony HD camera and is, excuse me, has the text-to-speech. So this is good for patients who um, like to read a lot. And the Merlin is similar CCTV that also allows you the ability to place items underneath the camera and to read a few bills. Um, it comes in different size monitors and has different modes for patient as far as comfort. The Acrobel HD is probably one of um, the more common CCTVs that I use here in Arizona. It's portable, which is nice because we do have a lot of patients who live in Arizona half the time, um, six months out of a year in Arizona. And so this allows for easy transportation. They can place this in a a bag and transport it easily on the plane. Um, and they are available in different sizes. They also have a moving camera which allows you to see distance, intermediate and near, as well as your um, own face to shave or put on makeup. The transformer is also portable. This is nice for patients who are in school or still working and they are able to bring it to work and the camera is movable and it rotates 330 degrees and it's lightweight making it easier to transfer. I'm going to go over a couple of portable CCTVs. What's nice about the portable CCTVs such as the Amigo is they are small lightweight, you can place it in your pocket or purse and view different objects for both short term as well as long term reading. Um, they also have a large view to view. When we use the portable video magnifiers, what nice is you have a good working distance unlike the reading glasses which require you to hold things pretty close. And then finally there is the Pebble um, and the Pebble Mini. These are very lightweight and they allow again for larger field of view when reading as well as different magnification levels. And they can be used for reading menus, near spotting, um, seeing price tags, even held up to the scope to see dials or thermostats. And the Pebble um, HD can be placed so that you can sign your documents and place checks or receipt un underneath them. And in conclusion, there are many devices or tools that are available to enhance your daily living so that you can continue to enjoy your daily activities. I want to thank again Jerry for allowing me to uh, take this opportunity to go over different devices that are available to enhance your daily living.
So I want to have Jerry go, go ahead and take control. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong. It was a great presentation. Um, if anybody has any questions they'd like to present to the doctor, um, if you look on your uh, right side, you'll see a little plus box that says questions, and we'll be able to answer them. So um, I have a question right now. So uh, it says, and I'll read it for you, doctor, would you please discuss when you refer to blindness rehabilitation specialists with master's degrees in their fields for joint service provision? For additional assessments and training, there are specialists working not only with people who are blind, but people who have low vision. Teachers of the visually impaired, certified vision rehabilitation therapists, um, mobilities and low vision are, are experts who can additionally assess people on and train people on many of the di devices you described today. Thank you so much for giving us that detailed information. Um, another question, will this be archived or available? And yes, it will be. Um, it will be on Enhanced Vision YouTube channel. So if you just go in to YouTube.com and type in Enhanced Vision, you'll be able to pull the webinar up by name. Um, and hold on, I'm getting a lot of questions. Bear with me a second. Okay. Okay. Okay, here's a question. Um, what is the most helpful for severe macular degeneration, a computer or an iPad? There's the, the advantage of the technology is an iPad is easily um, usable because it allows for ease of magnification compared to a PC or computer. With the computers, generally patients would have to um, either purchase or download a program which would then zoom the text or magnify objects, whereas the iPad, it's, it's a touch of a finger basically to zoom in on objects. A lot of patients um, are moving towards the iPad and even with telephones, the smartphones, um, the, the Siri which is available with the um, I believe 4S and 5S iPhones are nice because you can um, tell the phone what to do without actually having to decipher keypads. Okay, thank you. The next question is, is the transformer de device compatible with the Samsung Chrome laptop? And I'll grab that question. Okay. Currently our transformer is, a, is a, a compatible with any uh, laptop running a Windows um, operating system. Um, so that's the most I can tell. If you have a more specific, please just give us a call um, and speak to our tech support and they can go into a lot more detail. Okay, next question for you, doctor. Uh, what could you recommend for use in a public library setting for many different people? As far as what um, as far as the question is uh, maybe it, maybe it's one, a librarian asking what would be the best purchase for a library I guess that would you work. know what this, a CCTV is great because you can place any um, book magazine underneath it it has a large field of view in addition it has a large range of magnification um, each individual may have a different need and with with the CCTV um, that I mentioned, it can allow patients who need a lower magnification versus a 40 40x magnification be able to see and read. Um, it's more challenging to have, for example, a hand magnifier because the hand magnifier may not be the correct magnification needed for the different patient or individuals going into the library, whereas the CCTV has such a wide range that it's more likely to be used by people coming in to read. Okay. Um, here is a question. Um, would a porter, oh, hold on one second, let me get it. And this is a question. I have a question for persons with, who experience low vision, meaning vision at 20, 
slash 200 or worse and attending higher education, do you recommend large print books or using audio recordings of books? What have you found, doctor, in your experience? It depends on the individual. Um, you can still, some patients are still able to read with a large print, but however, it's challenging because they are um, reading basically at a slower efficiency compared to um, audiobooks. But it, it, again, it's individual preference. The audio is nice because you don't, the reading speed is basically different if you were to do it on your own versus audiobooks. It takes a lot more um, time to read using either a higher prescription magnifying glasses or a stand magnifier versus audiobooks. But it's more individual preference. Okay, one more question. Would a portable device like the Pebble be beneficial for a client with wet AMD due to the concern that the client's visions could change rapidly in a short amount of time? Is there a recommended device to help such a client with long-term use in mind? What's nice about the portable video magnifiers are that there are different ranges of magnification and if the vision does change depending on the current level um, you can still magnify the objects where the patient may still be able to see but that's again that depends on the visual current visual acuity of the patient with the macular degeneration Okay, and that looks like that covers all of our questions. Um, if anybody would like to get a link to the printed um, uh, a presentation, uh, please email marketing at enhancedvision.com, and I'll be happy to send you a link where you can actually download the pres or the PowerPoint. So again, if you'd like a copy of the PowerPoint, please email marketing at enhancedvision.com. I want to thank Dr. Rong for her great presentation, and I want to thank everybody who joined us. We truly appreciate your interest. Thank uh, you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.